Believe me when I tell you, I nearly passed out when I saw one of these Pixel 7 Pro features in action. It's that good. This is your complete Google Pixel 7 Pro camera review, including some of the best camera features. Can the Pixel 7 Pro compete with the DSLR? You'll have to watch to find out. Hey friends, I'm Tasia Custody and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I share tech tips, app reviews, and a ton of Google tips. Me and Google, it's like two peas in a pod. And I've been lucky enough to be gifted a Google Pixel 7 Pro to review for you. But don't be fooled, this is not a sponsored video. I'm simply testing out the camera system and then telling you like it is. So we have a ton to cover, let's go. So first things first, we're gonna talk about the camera system and what you're getting with Pixel 7 Pro. So here are all the camera specs. Pixel 7 Pro features a three camera system on the back. There's a 50 megapixel wide camera with an 82 degree field of view. There's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus and a 125.8 degree field of view. And rounding out the back cameras is a 48 megapixel telephoto camera with five times optical zoom. This baby allows us to access up to 30 times super res zoom. Now on the front, Pixel 7 Pro has a 10.8 megapixel front camera with 92.8 degree field of view. So this is actually a little bit of a downgrade from the 11.1 .1 megapixel front camera we saw on Pixel 6 Pro, but I think Google is really relying on its computational photography here to make up for the difference in megapixels. But more on the front facing cameras later. Pixel 7 Pro allows for shooting video in 4K at 30 or 60 frames per second, and you've still got all the features you know and love, like video stabilization too. But you can now record in 10-bit HDR video and take advantage of something called cinematic blur, which I will talk a little bit more about later. And a lot of this is due to Google Tensor G2. Tensor G2 is the high-powered engine behind Pixel 7 Pro. So Google Tensor was the first custom built processor designed by Google and made specifically for the Pixel 6 series. So now Google Tensor G2 is the second custom chip designed and built by Google. This is one powerful chip. It allows them to improve on their already advanced AI, computational photography, performance, and more. And it's important to keep Tensor G2 in mind as we run through some of the camera features on Pixel 7 Pro, because there are seriously some crazy things you can do with this baby. And just so you know, as usual, any image or video you're going to see today has had no editing, no special lighting done to it at all. I really want you to get the feel of if you take this baby straight out of the box and you start snapping pics and shooting vids. That's what we're doing. So before we get into some of the best Pixel 7 Pro camera features, let's circle on back to that front facing camera. There's a couple things to note here. Here's a little comparison of the front facing camera on Pixel 6 Pro versus Pixel 7 Pro. I'm not really sure which I prefer to be honest. I feel like 6 Pro has captured the detail of my skin better, but overall the photo is a little bit darker. And I'm not sure why, but I feel like the 7 Pro is softening my selfies a little bit, as if my skin has been photoshopped and the colorization is a little bit different. And by the way, I don't have the subtle retouching feature on in either of these photos. So obviously I'm nitpicking here, but that's what we're here for, right? If we take a look at the front facing portrait mode between Pixel 6 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro, you can see they both struggle to render the softening effect at my hairline. And again, you're gonna notice that slight color variation here and skin softening effect with Pixel 7 Pro, even though I had that retouching feature off. In terms of crispness of the photos, I really think it'd be hard to tell the difference between the megapixels between the two. Now, before we jump into the camera test and some of the newer features and updates, I wanna give you guys a quick rundown of some features that aren't new to Pixel 7 Pro, but are still fabulous. I am happy to report that wide angle images are still epic on Pixel 7 Pro. I have been obsessed with ultra wide since the 5A and I'm so happy to see that the magic continues on Pixel 7 Pro. Wide and ultra wide shots are rendered beautifully without any noise. Motion modes like action pan and long exposure are also still great. 
though still considered in a beta phase. And Night Sight on Pixel 7 Pro is honestly better than ever. I snapped a few photos of Poppy out front at nighttime and she came out well lit and in focus. And by the way, she would not sit still. So this is all the more impressive. This is thanks to Google Tensor G2. It's rendering night sight photos faster and better than ever. So then for good measure, I snapped a photo of some of our Halloween decor out front and it captured the spooky essence of our yard, taking in that spotlight color perfectly. And can we forget how obsessed I am with Magic Eraser? I'm pretty sure I lost my mind when that feature was released. And I'm happy to report it just gets better and better with every software update, I swear to you. While the render won't be perfect every time, especially if you have a lot going on in the photo and there's different backgrounds that it's kind of maybe hard to match, it's still so good and way better than any third-party app I've tried. And by the way, if you want detailed explanations on how to use any of these features, I've linked to my Google Pixel 6 Pro camera review and I go over everything in depth there. But let's move on to portrait mode for a minute. And no, this is not new to Pixel 7 Pro, obviously, but I have to say with Google Tensor G2, it is rendering portrait photos better than ever. Wait till you see this. So I took a bunch of random portrait mode photos and I have to say, no surprise, I'm blown away. I wanted to test the processing power here, so I made sure to take some shots with my hair wavy and I wore a baggy shirt in some of these shots too to try to trick the camera a bit. So sometimes portrait mode can be a little wonky around those edges of that focus area like we saw with the front facing camera, but I am really impressed with the 7 Pro here. It's not perfect, yet I've met to meet a portrait mode that is. So here's another example. I absolutely love the natural colorization of this. Remember, I've not enhanced any of these. I haven't done any editing. There was no special lighting. It captured the coral pink of my shirt nearly perfectly. And the portrait blur around my hair is honestly outstanding. But enough about me. Let's take a look at Poppy Girl. And again, it's gorgeous colorization and nice edging around her fur. I just love portrait mode on Pixel 7 Pro. There, I said it. And of course, portrait mode still has all the editing capabilities you know and love, like portrait blur and portrait light. So here's a quick recap on how to use those features. This portrait photo here, I think I'd like to adjust the blur on it as well as the light. So let's tap on edit, we'll head to tools and tap on portrait blur. Here you can use the slider to adjust that background blur and you can adjust the depth of it too if you want. Just tap done once you're done, and then let's go over and tap on portrait light. As we move this circle around, you can see how the light changes on the image. So I think I like it here. It kind of fills out that light on my face a bit better. And you can adjust the amount of light as well and tap done when you're done. If you hold down on the image, you can see the original. And then when you let go, you can see the edit. So tap on save copy if you're happy with the changes. All right, moving on to super res zoom. Pixel 7 Pro allows you to zoom in further than ever before, up to 30 times zoom. Pixel 7 Pro includes a telephoto lens with five times optical zoom, which if you take a look at Dora here, let's zoom into two times, which produces excellent quality. And here she is at that five times zoom. I love the details of her fur and whiskers. It's outstanding. Then we can crank it up to 10 times zoom. Apologies because she moved here as I was snapping this photo. The dog was startling her, what can I say? But I'm not mad at the 10 times zoom. So after she settled again, I cranked it up to 20 times zoom. You can tell that the image is getting a little bit noisier than before, but it's still pretty impressive for 20 times zoom. If we crank it all the way up to 30 times zoom, this is where things get a bit sketch. It's definitely not a clear image. So as another example, I zoomed in on the top of Camelback Mountain and you can see you really do lose some detail at 30 times zoom. So I'm not over the moon about the 30 times zoom quality, but I guess I'm not really mad at it either. I mean, really, how often are you going to need to zoom in that far? Mm, I'm not really sure, maybe at a concert, but I will say there is something I love about super res zoom. 
Once you get past 15 times zoom, you're given a little indicator on screen to better show you what's in frame and to help you stabilize and focus on what you're trying to zoom in on. All right, we can't do a Pixel 7 Pro camera features video and not talk about cinematic blur. This is just great. So if you're familiar at all with the pixels over the last few years, you might recall a great stabilization feature called cinematic pan. So with cinematic pan, your videos are half speed and smooth as silk. Users, including me, love this feature so much because it produces more cinematic video shots on all your pixel devices. So it's only natural that the Google gods would bless us with another cinematic feature of sorts, cinematic blur. With cinematic blur enabled, you'll be able to set the focus and Pixel takes care of the rest, creating a blurred background in video mode. It's basically like portrait mode, but for video. So in your camera app, tap on cinematic. Now tap on the screen to set your focus. Here you can start recording video. You can leave your focus set and that's cool and all, or you can rack focus like a professional videographer. So all you have to do is tap on the other subject you want to bring into focus and voila, your focus has changed. So here's what the final video clip looks like. Yes, I have been waiting for this to come to Pixel, hallelujah. So now let's talk about a massive accessibility feature found on Pixel 7 Pro, Guided Frame. This allows low vision and blind users to take a voice guided selfie. So Guided Frame works with TalkBack, that's Android's screen reader, to help users into an optimal position for selfies. So users receive directions like move your head to the left or to the right or tilt up, along with a haptic vibration. I love a good accessibility feature and anything we can do to make our technology more equitable, amen. Another new camera feature on Pixel 7 Pro is macro focus. We can now take photos with the most minute of details. So here's how this works. In your camera app, just move your camera closer to the object you want to shoot in macro focus. You'll automatically be put in macro focus mode and you're gonna know you're there because of this little yellow flower icon on the screen. So you can just focus up, work your angles a little bit and then snap the photo. So here are some detailed shots I played with. I took a flower shot inside, that was pretty good. But we just had rain and I really wanted to see if we could actually capture raindrops like Google claims. And wouldn't you know, we can capture raindrops on flowers. How great is this? I'm quite pleased with macro focus. I really think it's just a matter of playing around with the angle of your image a little bit. I just wanna take photos all day with Pixel 7 Pro. Like, that's what I wanna do with my life. Anyway, let's go out with a bang, shall we? At the beginning of this video, I told you guys I nearly passed out with one of the features on Pixel 7 Pro, and this is it. So do you guys remember how we were introduced to face unblur with Pixel 6 Pro? It's where the Pixel is using machine learning to unblur faces in low light or with too much movement. So when you snap a photo, it's actually taking two images simultaneously and then Google's machine learning works its magic and it fuses the sharper face from the ultra wide with the low noise shot from the main camera and boom, face unblur. But why do I bring this up? Because with Pixel 7 Pro, we now have a feature called Photo Unblur. This allows you to retroactively unblur old photos. Yes, I'm talking about images shot on any device from any year. Seriously. I will ask you to sit down for this if you're not already and hold in the contents of your brain because your mind is about to be blown. In your Google Photos app, select the old photo that's a bit blurry. So this here is a photo from an old DSLR I had back in 2013. As cute as it is, it is blurry. So all we have to do is tap on edit and an unblur option will automatically pop up under the photo. If you don't see that, it can be found in your tools section as well. Just tap on unblur and watch the magic happen. Are you kidding me? The photo is instantly unblurred and you can use the slider to scale and adjust that if you want. 
and then tap on done and you can save a copy of that photo. So here's the original photo and then here it is with photo unblur. Holy moly, Tyler to Foley, I can't even. Photo unblur literally brought me to my knees. Like, I don't even understand how this is possible, but it's honestly a thing of machine learning mastery and I am here for it. Now, to be clear, photo unblur works in the Google Photos app with Pixel 7 Pro and Pixel 7. And if you have a Series 7 device and you do not see the photo blur option, it's okay. You're going to want to make sure your Google Photos app is up to date and you might also want to restart your device. I actually did both of those things and photo on blur popped up right away for me. So now for my final verdict. Do I think Pixel 7 Pro is the best smartphone camera available? Yes. Do I think it can compete with a DSLR? Yes. Do I think it will completely replace your DSLR? Probably not but it's a lot of computational photography power in a little device. Now, do I think Pixel 7 Pro is worth the upgrade from Pixel 6 Pro? Yes, and here's why. The only knock I really have is that the 30 times zoom isn't as crisp as shown in some examples I've seen online. So I don't know if I'm just doing it wrong, but that's really the only somewhat negative for me and it's not even really that negative. Other than that, Everything else is a huge positive. With literally just pointing and shooting, the images produced honestly are stunning. It's actually hard to believe that some of these portrait, wide angle, night sight, macro focus images, and cinematic blur videos are coming from a phone. Wait, you can make calls on this too? But in all seriousness, the images are so impressive. I really think that if you kept all the features from Pixel 6 Pro that we love, like real tone, motion mode, magic eraser, so on, and simply added photo on blur and guided frame, those alone would make this worth the upgrade. But then we still have features I didn't even really touch on, like 10-bit HDR video recording capabilities and speech enhancement. And come on, I officially have a new travel companion and her name is Pixel 7 Pro. Now I've linked to a full tech spec list in the description below because after all, there are just too many features to cover in one video. <sighs> we did it, girl. So what do you think of the Google Pixel 7 Pro camera? What are your favorite features and why? Let everyone know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, well, I wanna know. So give it a like, a share, or leave that comment below. You can click right about here to subscribe to my channel and here and here for even more Pixel content. You know you want to. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. But for now, I've got a date with my new bestie.